Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for today's Healthline 3. I'm your host, Courtney Butts, and Healthline 3 is where we like to focus on ways to live a healthier, happier, and pain-free life. We'll be taking your calls and answering your questions live in the studio today. We'll be opening those phone lines soon, but as a reminder, make sure you're in a quiet room when you call with your TV turned all the way down so that we can hear your question. That number to call is 318-219-4569. We'll have that number on your screen. And today we're talking about hip and back pain and here to answer the question, is it my hip or is it my back, is Dr. Milan Modi with the Orthopedic Clinic in Shreveport. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely, and you've got some awesome models for us to break down today. I'm excited to dive in. And so tell me a little bit about what you do, first of all, as an orthopedic doctor. So I'm an orthopedic spinal surgeon. Uh, so I did uh, training in um, all the joints, you know, so shoulders, elbows, hands, hips, knees, as well as the spine. Then I did a fellowship in spinal surgery with cool. both orthopedics and neurosurgery. So now for the last 17 years, I focus my practice on spinal conditions, so non-surgical and surgical options for patients who have spinal conditions. Mm. Gotcha, yeah, and so we're answering the question, is it my hip or is it my back, and is this something that your patients usually struggle with, determining that? Most definitely, this mm -hmm. is a very common issue uh, that patients present with, um, so patients will often get referred for quote unquote hip pain, and sometimes uh, the hip pain is deceptive because it's not always from the hip joint itself. Mm. It can also emanate from the lumbar spine, which is the lower back. Um, so it's um, our duty and uh, obligation for the patient to carefully examine them, mm -hmm. um, ask uh, appropriate questions, um, do imaging, and meticulously uh, delineate the diagnosis as well as individualized treatment plan for them. Yeah, okay, and so since you're a sp your spine surgeon, so you Correct. kind of focus on the spine, so sometimes people may be referred for a hip injury or arthritic pain in, in the hip, and I guess at that point, what do you typically do? So we do an exam uh, uh, as well as asking the proper questions. So if a patient, you know, asks patients, where is your pain? Place your hand in the pocket of your pants or your mm -hmm. shorts, whatever they're wearing, where your pain is. So they mm -hmm. place their hand in the front pocket that's usually what we call groin pain or anterior thigh pain. And that pain is usually from the hip joint itself. So patients with that will have limited range of motion of their hip. Mm -hmm. uh, they have pain when they get in and out of a car, pain when they get in and out of a lower chair, pain when they're walking. If the patient places their hand in the back pocket of their pants or shorts, and that's where their pain is, that's what we call buttocks pain. Buttocks pain is usually from the lumbar spine um, that's because of the nerves, if you see here yeah. in the lumbar spine, the nerves come down into the middle of the back as well as each side where the buttocks is. So nerve pain can emanate and be referred into the buttocks, mm. um, not only in the middle of the back, but also mm -hmm. on the side. Gotcha. Yeah, so I can see how it can be a little confusing because it's kind of close to the same area, but front is more associated with hip and back pocket is more associated with spine. That's right. right. That's correct. Um, so if you look at this model here, this is a skeleton model, mm -hmm. and this is the spine, and this is the pelvis, and these are hip joints. So again, the hip joint, you know, they, like the song goes, the hip joint is connected to the knee joint, but also it's connected to the spine joint. Mm -hmm. And so the spine joint is very close to the hip joint. So that's why this is a very common confusion of hip pain. Is it from my hip joint itself, or is it from my lumbar spine? Mm, yeah, and, and so that's a, a, an important distinguishment to make so you can actually treat it correctly. Correct, yeah. exactly. Okay, so what typically causes hip and back pain? So hip pain often is caused by either tears in the, uh, what we call the labrum, labrum which are mm -hmm. uh, cushions in the hip joint itself. It can also be from decreased fluid in the hip joint. It can also be from arthritis, you know, arthritis is, which is wear and tear. Uh, so that can cause true hip pain, or we talked about the groin pain or anterior thigh pain, the front pocket of your pants mm -hmm. area. Um, and in terms of the other hip pain, quote unquote, yeah. which is buttocks pain, it can come from a pinched nerve, can come from a herniated disc, mm -hmm. it can come from a bone that's kind of shifted forward, like in this model. You know, the bone is shifted forward, pulling the nerves back. Mm. Uh, so it can come from a fracture in the, in the spine. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, you know, again, doing things proper examination, 
and the meticulous imaging allows us to correctly diagnose the patient. Yeah, okay, and so tell me a little bit about the imaging. What types of imaging do you look for? So normally we order um, x-rays. Uh, it can be x-rays of the hip, it can be x-rays of the uh, spine itself. Uh, we can do CAT scans, MRI imaging. Um, cool. Those are the imaging that normally we utilize. Yeah, okay, and so let's say, let's say someone has this pain, but maybe it's not that bad, you know, how would, what would you suggest for someone that may not be ready for surgery or uh, extensive treatment? What are the things they need to monitor as far as symptoms? So normally we ask patients like, how bad is your pain? You know, from a zero to 10 scale. Um, if the pain is less than five on a daily basis, uh, very easy at home uh, exercises, stretching, uh, anti-inflammatories that are over the counter mm -hmm. can help with that. If your pain, if their pain is above five, uh, then we start talking about doing more things like physical therapy uh, with a program and a proper physical therapist. We'll be talking about doing uh, spinal injections, hip injections. Mm -hmm. um, normally we leave surgery until the very end. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so you kind of want to manage it first and see how, how long you can manage it for sure. Yeah, and I'm sure that's what most people would like to put off surgery as long as possible. That's correct. Yeah, yes. okay. And so when someone has pain when walking, it's more likely due to hip pain. Correct. It, it can, it, yeah. So that's that's where kind of the conundrum comes right, in. Right. Okay. You know, that's where it's puzzling. Um, pain from walking that's in the front in the thigh or mm -hmm. in the front pocket area. Uh, that's usually from the hip joint itself. Mm -hmm. If it's pain uh, from walking in the buttocks or the back pocket area, or your low back, or shooting down the leg, mm -hmm. that can be from and usually is from the lumbar spine. Yeah, okay. And that shooting down, is that usually associated with sciatica? Is that a big thing or, or could it be something else? That's very true. I mean, uh, uh, most lay pe people will call it sciatica, which mm -hmm. is pain that shoots down the leg. Uh, so there's a sciatic nerve. So if you look in this model here, the nerves all come together and become a kind of a thicker nerve right here. Okay. And that's what we call the sciatic nerve, you know. So there's actually a sciatic nerve and inflammation of the sciatic nerve is what we we'll call sciatica. Mm. In uh, the medical terms, we would call that either lumbar stenosis, which means pressure on the nerves in the lumbar spine, or we may call it lumbar radiculopathy. Essentially, we're all talking about the same thing. We're mm -hmm. talking about a pinched nerve in the low back that is causing pain in the buttocks and shooting down the leg. Yeah, and is that, that's pretty painful when it shoots down the leg. Like, you know that something's wrong. It's not like you know, it's, it's not in question. You're like, whoa, there's something going on right now. And, and is this something that you would say you need to get s be seen quickly about? Uh, most definitely. I think patients, when they experience that nerve pain, it tends to be very severe. Um, uh, you, again, uh, in the eight, nine, 10 sca category in terms of pain. So patients will often present to the emergency room or they'll call our office and get an urgent uh, triage, or urgent mm -hmm. work in, uh, same day appointment for that type of pain. Uh, and usually we can calm it down with, um, again, proper um, medications uh, and, and then doing the imaging as well as examination to diagnose the problem. Um, mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. So we talked about imaging. What other physical exams do you typically perform? So in physical exams, uh, we will perform a, a, what we call hip range of motion exercises. So lifting the leg up and seeing where the pain is, uh, internal and external rotating the hip joint itself, so basically moving the hip joint mm -hmm. to see how much motion they have and how much pain they have with certain maneuvers. In terms of lower, lower back, we ask them to walk, we'll do strength testing of the lower extremities. Uh, there are certain maneuvers in the lumbar spine that you can do to elicit uh, pain, and if that's true, then they have a pinched nerve, something like this, we call a straight leg raise test. So if a patient says, look, when I'm, uh, my pain shoots down my leg when I bend down, tie my shoes, mm. Mm -hmm. That's what we call a straight leg raise test mm. because you're pulling on that nerve and causing right. pain shooting down the leg. Gotcha. Well, we have our first caller, Steve. Thanks for joining us. And what is your question? Yes, I wanted to ask about total disc replacement for uh, discs that are totally degenerated, like between L4 and 5. Um, that's a very good question, Steve. Um, so you can definitely do a disc replacement. Uh, for this condition. Um, we have to do proper imaging and proper testing before considering what we call total disc replacement. Um, 
because if your facet joints, which are joints in the back of your uh, spine, so here's the disc, which is in the front of the spine. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the front right here. The, but if the disc is degenerative, but the facet joints, which are in the back here, right here, are okay, then replacing the disc will be helpful. If the disc itself is very degenerative, like bone on bone, and the facet joints are also degenerative, then doing a disc replacement will not help oh. um, that person. So we, again, doing the proper testing is very important before deciding on the proper surgical plan. Right, yeah. Who would do that? Who would we talk to about that? Um, you can speak to your primary care physician uh, to get a referral or you can call our office. Um, I believe they'll put the phone number up later for a direct appointment with us. Um, uh, your orthopedic surgeon, if you already have one, uh, can easily diagnose the problem uh, and then refer in to a spinal surgeon. Great. All right, thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Steve, for joining us. And if you're just joining us, you can give us a call at 318-219-4569. We're talking specifically about hip and back. <laughs> sure and give us a call. All right, I don't know what that was, <laughs> but we'll just keep going. Okay, well, so can stress be a factor in hip or back or leg pain? Most definitely. Yeah. Um, so physical and emotional stress mm -hmm. can both uh, lead to increased hip pain or back pain in multiple ways. S stress uh, can increase the muscle tension around the joints as mm -hmm. well as your lower back. Stress can increase your pain sensitivity. Uh, stress will also reduce the blood flow to uh, certain joints and muscles. Um, mm. So all those things can lead to increased hip or back pain. Wow, yeah, and I, I believe I remember reading a statistic earlier this year that Louisiana is one of the most stressed out states. <laughs> and so I'm sure that that doesn't help the cause. So so yeah, making making sure we're implementing stress management skills, I'm sure that that's, that's also a good thing to incorporate in your treatment plan. Most certainly. Yeah. So um, yeah, we, we try to help the patient understand how to cope with stress and how to decrease the stress. Because not only does uh, stress is a non-physical diagnosis, mm -hmm. Uh, but it helps if you decrease your stress, decrease your chronic pain. Right, okay, good tips there. Well, can other conditions mimic this pain that people are ex experiencing and what are those conditions? So other conditions that can mimic uh, buttocks or hip or back pain uh, do exist. And again, this is where the careful questioning, careful examination and proper imaging comes into play. So we, uh, so there are things like uh, kidney infections, uh, kidney stones can mm -hmm. cause back pain, mm -hmm. along with gallbladder attacks can cause back pain. Uh, things like um, diverticulitis, which is an abdominal condition, can cause uh, not only uh, sort of hip pain or the anterior groin pain, but can also cause back pain. Gynecological conditions such as endometriosis, polyps, um, those kind of things would call, can also cause back pain. So you have to be careful uh, about the proper diagnosis and again, proper treatment. Yeah, yeah, that's good to know, especially getting, you know, getting in with your primary care and then, then, then running more tests from there. Okay, we have James on the line. Thanks for joining us, James. And what's your question? Yeah, my wife had a stroke and uh, when she stands up a lot of times, the calves in her legs just go to jelly and she almost falls. Um, James, when was your wife's stroke? In February. In February, okay. So uh, is she in physical therapy currently? She's been to physical therapy. There's a time run out on her. Okay. Um, so um, patients who experience a stroke with lower extremity weakness uh, require extensive physical therapy, um, not only with a physical therapist and, and a program, but also at home. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very important for the patient as well as the family to kind of implement a daily um, program several times a day at home because um, patients with muscle weakness from strokes it could take up to 12 to 18 months for improvement wow. uh, and independent ambulation going now she's going to the gym. i'm sorry what's she's that going to the gym she, she's trying to work out some at the gym okay also. well that's you know we definitely applaud her for doing that because that's really uh, important and necessary for her Sometimes uh, just because you have a stroke and your muscle weakness in your legs doesn't always uh, point to why you're having the muscle weakness. 
So doing a uh, workup of the lower extremities, um, such as her spinal condition, would also be helpful. So if she has spinal stenosis, which is pressure on the spinal nerves itself going into the legs, it can also lead to muscle weakness. So if someone is dealing with a stroke, and they also have what about spinal stenosis. What chiropractor? Would that help? So chiropractor help? Um, chiropractors can help for um, back pain, um, but in terms of leg weakness, uh, you probably should get the proper evaluation first before going to chiropractor for muscle leg weakness. And most chiropractors will agree with that, that they can help more with um, muscle aches and pains mm -hmm. rather than weakness in the arms or legs. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for joining us. And again, we're talking about hip and back pain, and we have Dr. Milan Modi here with us. And if you have a question for him, give us a call at 318-219-4569. That number is right there on your screen. Okay, so kind of getting into some treatment options, which is your bread and butter. Uh, tell me a little bit about these treatment options, maybe starting with hip, then we can talk about back. Sure. Um, so we, you know, again, we see all comers, whether it's uh, true hip pain or spine pain and over 90% of our patients are treated non-operatively. So they're treated non-operatively with those, um, so we talk about stretching exercises at home, uh, over-the-counter anti-inflammatories, physical therapy programs, uh, spinal injection or hip injections. Um, and then again, 10% of the patients may need what we call hip replacement surgery mm -hmm. or hip scopes. Okay, and hip replacement, um, what, what, tell me a little bit more about that. Uh, when do you suggest someone needs those 10% of your population that you serve, who, who or what um, has gotten them to that point that they actually need that? So you, you probably have heard people saying, well, I had bone on bone uh, mm -hmm. joints. So when the cartilage is all worn away in the hip joint itself and becomes bone on bone and becomes kind of very uh, unmanageable in terms of ambulation, in terms of walking, then that's usually a reas uh, reason to undergo surgery. Yeah, okay. So we talked about the hip, so tell me a little bit more about back. So probably similar approach, all of the, the management, but then when would someone need the surgery? So you're absolutely correct. Uh, very similar approach, you know, non-operative uh, for 90% of patients, and then 10% need surgical options. Um, so again, with terms of non-operative for the low back uh, is physical therapy, a daily home exercise program, proper nutrition, proper sleeping techniques, um, uh, the injections, spinal injections, so the number of different injections we can do for the patient, um, and then resorting to surgery at the very end. Yeah, okay. So tell me a little bit about uh, surgery, and so you've, how long have you been a surgeon? So I've been in the shreveport Bozier area for the last 17 years. Nice. Um, doing a spinal surgery. Okay, and so how have you seen, I mean, I'm sure a lot's changed in the last 17 years. Most definitely. Yeah, yes. so how have you seen this profession change and maybe just your work in surgery? So when, we, when I was in training uh, over two decades ago, um, you know, many of these surgeries were not even possible. Uh, now we have uh, significant uh, advances in robotic and minimally invasive surgery. Uh, some patients are able to go home the same day uh, due to proper anesthetic techniques and proper pain control. Uh, in 2016, uh, I was the first spinal surgeon in Louisiana to use a spinal robot. Cool. And uh, unfortunately, Wilson Pyramont was the first hospital in all of Louisiana to get a spinal robot. So in the last um, you know, 10 years or so, we've sort of advanced minimum invasive surgery mm -hmm. at Wilson Pyramont. That's awesome. Yeah, okay. So that w that's probably the biggest advancement, the robotic surgery? Correct. Yeah. yeah. So minimal invasive, which means smaller in in incisions, less muscle disruption, uh, and then robotic surgery to make it more precise uh, in how we place implants and how we um, help the patient out. Okay. And so specifically with spinal surgery, um, take me. I'm sure there's a lot of different types of surgeries you can perform, but maybe what are your most common and uh, what are they helping treat? So most common in terms of um, what we call pinched nerve, okay. it's essentially just doing decompression. So that's the simplest surgery, which is taking the pressure off the nerve. So that can be what we call microdiscectomy, which is basically if there's a rupture of the disc itself, you know, it's like a flat tire, and then we're, we're removing that portion of the tire that's ruptured, pushing on the nerve. So that's just going in, that's an outpatient procedure uh, where they go home the same day and they can tell when that n uh, nerve is no longer being pressed on because you're taking the offending disc fragment 
which is sitting on the nerve root itself, away. Mm. Uh, or if you have arthritis pushing on the nerve, taking some of that arthritis and just kind of taking some of the bone away and ligament away causes that leg pain to be better. Wow. So that's the simplest surgery we do. Um, there's other things that are more involved, as that gentleman earlier pointed out, which is disc replacements mm -hmm. and stopping unstable segments of your spine. Like in this case, if you kind of look at the, it's hard to see sometimes, but this bone is shifting forward on this bone. And sometimes we'll see instability or broken bones that are causing pressure on the nerves. So in those instances, we have to replace the disc. Um, that's where this sort of model comes in. You know, this is uh, sort of replacing the disc with a plastic spacer to put in uh, in place of the actual cartilage of the disc that mm -hmm. was there when it becomes bone on bone or just unstable. So a disc is placed and then held in place with screws into the bone. And then through minimal invasive techniques, these sort of titanium screws are placed to again help the bones heal wow. as well as stay in the proper alignment. Yeah, and this is all, uh, this is not an out, that's not an outpatient procedure, I would assume. We have been able to do oh, some of really? these outpatient, yeah. So the proper, again, the proper patient selection is important mm. um, and proper sort of uh, education um, and pain control that we have been able to do as outpatient as well. That's pretty awesome. And so this is probably one of the most recent um, newer surgeries, would you that's say? That's correct, yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, and so tell me about before and after. You know, pain, people come to you, I'm sure, with extensive pain uh, before some of these surgeries. So what is it like afterward? So I tell patients, look, we can make them better. We just can't make them perfect. Mm. Uh, perfect is the magic age between 20 and 25. We're all uh, don't need a warm shower to get going. We don't need uh, warm coffee. Uh, we can hit the ground running. That's the perfect age for all of our bodies. But if we can make the patient's life more livable, uh, more f for them to be more functional, for them to be able to interact with not only the, um, uh, the home, but also at work, mm -hmm. um, then that's uh, kind of a home run for some, some of these patients. Absolutely, and so they, they see a tremendous, I'm sure, improvement in their pain. It's so not perfect, but it's definitely better. That's right, so leg pain gets better first, then leg weakness, then at the very end, back pain as the bones heal. That's really awesome. I'm sure that's really rewarding for you, you know, knowing that, wow, like this is something that they kind of see a clear difference between where they were before and where they are after. Most definitely. Yeah, yeah. cool. Okay, so let's say someone, you know, they're not ready for surgery yet. So we've talked a little bit about exercises and those non-operative things that you want to do beforehand. Uh, tell me a little bit more about like what they can do at home now. Like maybe, maybe they're considering coming to someone like you sitting at home thinking about this. What can they do right now today? So today um, they can research uh, simple stretching exercises for their neck or the back um, and perform those daily, you know. So I think stretching really helps um, pain uh, in the l hip or the low back results from um, joints which are stiff. So m stretching, what stretching does, it, it releases the joints. Um, when joints get stiff, they get more painful. So daily walking, daily stretching, daily activity is very important to decrease your pain at home. Uh, proper ergonomics, so when p uh, patients tell me you know, um, that they have pain in their buttocks, um, and when they sit too long, well, mm -hmm. I think the time is not to sit too long. So sitting is one of the worst things you can do for your low back. So getting up and walking is a very good idea. If they work from home, then we're using a what we call very desk, which is a desk yeah. you just kind of raise up, or work more by standing, you know, uh, rather than sitting all the time, mm -hmm. or alternate sitting and standing. Um, they say they have pain in their buttocks all the time, uh, and we ask which buttocks, it's the left buttocks, and that's kind of where they put their big fat wallet. Oh. It's probably time to move that wallet down to a smaller wallet. Or sitting like this cross-legged. I'm sure that doesn't help either. <laughs> um, so patients with hip problems, like yeah. true hip joint problems, would have a difficult time sitting in mm. that position. You know. Okay. Uh, so there are a lot of things they can do, small modifications they can make at home that would definitely help. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a big thing, getting up and being active. It doesn't matter necessarily what it is. You know, you don't have to go to the gym and do this really crazy CrossFit exercise to be a, an active person. You can just get up throughout the day. Um, I actually just got a walking pad to go underneath my desk at home. 
It's also a standing desk, and that that's really transformed. I mean, I used to sit so much. I mean, I still do sometimes, you know. But um, but that's that's really helped a lot. And so yeah, just making those small changes right. um, can really make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, at work, you know, we've got several of our employees, you know, uh, who work at the desk, those variable desks, mm. and they're able to function better and they have less pain. I feel like it, you focus a little bit better too, because when you sit, it's it's easy to. I don't know, y you're just not moving, a and when you stand, you're you may be moving a little bit more, you might feel an increase in focus, too. Definitely. So what about, you know, we have our, our cell phones, and we look down, and our posture, I feel like, as a whole, as a, as a country, as a state, is just really not great. <laughs> so do you think that has an impact as well? Uh, most definitely. So poor posture uh, has a significant impact on not only neck pain, but also back pain, you know, so, um, um, even for us, you know, the ones who sort of uh, uh, preach and practice uh, these techniques, it's easy to fall into the slouching position. It's easy to start looking down and when mm -hmm. you're texting, but it's important to kind of be m very mindful to bring your phone up and bring your iPad up um, and do proper posture techniques um, for the um, those who are older and they don't uh, have bad posture. There's things like a posture corrector they can buy off the internet. 10, 15 bucks and kind of goes underneath their clothes and helps kind of keeps their shoulders back and kind of keeps them more upright and reminds them like a reminder, constant reminder to kind yeah. of stand up straight. Awesome, mm -hmm. very cool. Okay, so going back to the surgery real quick, we have a couple minutes left. Um, let's say someone is interested and in or maybe they just had the surgery and they're like, how long will it take for me to feel back to normal? Um, what does their timeline look like? Let's say you just had that uh, surgery for a pinched nerve or a disc discectomy or disc replacement. What does that timeline look like? So, if it's the simplest surgery, which is a decompression surgery, that timeline looks like you know majority of times outpatient or maybe one night in the hospital. They're older or they're in heart condition. Um, they can w you know we get them up walking the next day, and they usually go home uh, and they feel better over several weeks, and that recovery is about a three six month recovery period. Mm -hmm. If we're talking about the surgery with implants and fixing instability, fixing kind of bone on bone, fixing the total disc replacement and disc uh, spacers and those kind of things, I tell patients that recovery is about a six to 12 month process. You're not in bed for six to 12 months, you're active, but at the same time, your body inside is healing. Mm -hmm. So anytime you have surgery that involves bones and nerves, it's a good 12 month healing process mm -hmm. inside your body. Yeah, it's so definitely important to be patient with yourself as you're progressing and healing. That's right. Um, yeah, so we uh, we are at this time where we can maybe talk a little bit about where we can find you, where, where you're located, and um, are you currently accepting new patients? We're uh, always accepting new patients, and so while my clinic is located at the Portico Center, um, which is 7925 Uri Drive, and across from Wilson Pyrmont. Um, and I believe they'll uh, list the phone number shortly, but yep. um, to call in, um, you can have your primary care physician call us. You can call in yourself and get an appointment. Uh, myself and my team, we see patients on a da daily basis. Mm -hmm. As we said earlier, 90% of patients don't need surgery, and that's what my job and my team's job is to delineate the proper individualized treatment for that patient. Yeah, okay, and your number right there is 318-212-3610. That's right. correct. All That's right. Correct. And then there's a website right there that you can visit if you're interested. And www.tocshreveport.com. And that means the orthopedic clinic, right? The orthopedic clinic, Shreveport.com. Okay. That's correct. Great. Great. Okay. So let's say someone, do, do they need a referral from their physician, their primary care? They do not. Um, okay. They're more than welcome to talk to their primary care about it, but they do not need a referral. We can. Uh, they can self-refer. Nice, okay, and so as soon as they call, uh, you know, how soon can they get in to see you? What's your wait time usually? So it depends on the uh, on the condition itself. You know, again, we talked about their, their pain levels, severe, eight, eight, nine, ten, 9, 10, um, and it's just acutely happened, then we triage them in almost sometimes same day appointments. Uh, other times it's, you know, a few days or a few weeks. All right, okay, and so you can help with the non-operative things to help people feel better right now. We already talked about some things. If you missed it, go back and rewatch this. It's on ktbs.com slash healthline3. Some things that you can be doing already today to be more active, stretching. Uh, you can, you know, start today to, to make sure that you feel better. And if not, then he's your guy for surgery as well.
All right. Well, thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. Have a good day.